What's on everyone's mind today? Inflation nation. Inflation. 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 Inflation's grip on American consumers not letting up. But what is inflation? Where does it come from? And how does it affect you? According to two of our esteemed professors from the Feliciano School of Business at Montclair State University, Mr. Todd Fetterman and Dr. David Axelrod, inflation is defined as a rise in the general price level overall of all goods and services over a period of measured time. Inflation gets calculated by a government agency called the Bureau of Labor Statistics that's located in Washington. But how do they calculate it? The government surveys consumers all over the country by tracking a basket of 175 goods that people are buying. And then they create an index known as the Consumer Price Index that tells us how much prices are going up on a percentage basis. Have you noticed that there's a reoccurring trend that consumers are experiencing? You pull up to the gas station, prices are up and rising. You go to the supermarket, the prices are up and rising. You go buy a new car and the prices are up, way up. Inflation is rising but does it have a positive or negative effect on the economy? Let's start with a common misbelief. Inflation rates should be at 0%, right? Not really. The FED always aims for 2% because businesses only invest with the hope of profit. By raising the price of goods and services, they produce that profit. So from an economic standpoint, when we talk about a business investing in itself, we mean that they're expanding their capacity to produce. You might think the higher the number, the better, but that's not the case. If your wages haven't kept pace with the price increases, then your paycheck is buying less than it used to. If you have savings in the bank, whether they're in cash or a certificate of deposit, if there's a 6% inflation and you're only earning 1%, you're 5% behind. If prices stay the same over the year, your $100 in the bank still buys you $100 worth of goods. If inflation was 5% and you didn't receive a raise, then your $100 will buy about $95 worth of goods. Same goes for savings. The money you've accumulated in the bank or at home will buy you less than today. The system always encourages you to spend what you have, but that doesn't mean you should spend all of your money. You want to have cash on hand because there are going to be emergencies. If you don't have enough, then you're going to have to borrow the money. And now it's not just inflation, it's also the interest rate. And if you got to borrow on a credit card, now it's 18%, 20% or more. So if people believe prices are going to rise, they're going to want to buy more now. But that triggers more inflation. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. So. Is there a way to break this cycle? That's where the Federal Reserve Bank comes in. To fight inflation, they raise short-term interest rates, which will have an immediate impact on credit card debt, car loans, which will dampen uh, people's spending. In addition, the higher interest rates will cause some businesses to cut back on investment. So in the short run, it definitely dampens inflation because there's less demand. However, in the long run, because businesses might invest less today, there's going to be less production of goods and services in the future. And when you have less production of goods, you'll see fewer amounts of goods and services in the future, and that could cause long-term inflation to be higher. So it definitely has a short-term impact on cutting inflation, but in the long run, it could actually hurt inflation. Okay, so inflation affects everyone the same way? Inflation affects people differently, depending on which assets you own. If you own an asset like real estate, and it's gone up 20%, but the overall price level has only gone up, say, 10%, then you're clearly better off. If you owe the bank an $800,000 house and you borrowed $500,000, you still owe $500,000. But your income that was paying off that mortgage is probably somewhat keeping pace with inflation, meaning you actually have to pay back less, if your income keeps the pace. So, overall, inflation is not necessarily a negative thing as long as you're aware of the effects and it's calculated in the businesses and individual budgets. Are you aware?